All atoms will eventually decay. That's just the way of nature. However, some molecules and atoms decay in different ways. Some decay with high amounts of energy being emitted, and some decay by releasing a helium atom. There can be many ways this happens, so let's break it down to see why it happens and what kinds of decay there are. An important definition we need to know before we dive in is isotope. An isotope is when the same element has different atomic masses. For example, carbon on the periodic table normally has a mass of 12, but there are variations of carbon where it has a mass of 13 or 14. These variations are what we call isotopes. Normally when we're talking about atoms, we're worried about the atomic number, but because isotopes are all about a change in mass, we are focused on the atomic mass. This is especially noted when writing nuclear notation. This type of notation includes writing the mass and atomic number next to the symbol. For example, helium has an atomic number of 2 and an atomic mass of 4, so we would write it as 4,2-He. Okay, so now that we've got the definitions and notation out of the way, let's look at our first type of decay, which is alpha decay. Alpha decay happens when two protons and two neutrons leave the nucleus of an atom. This results in a helium atom as a product because helium has two protons and two neutrons. For example, let's consider uranium. Uranium naturally has a mass of 238 and an atomic number of 92. When uranium goes through alpha decay, it will lose two protons and two neutrons. Therefore, its mass will decrease by four and its atomic number will decrease by two, making it an isotope of thorium. Beta decay happens when a neutron wants to become a proton. This happens because a neutron emits a beta particle, also known as an electron. Once released, the neutron is now a positive proton. Keep in mind, the proton identifies which atom we're working with. By the neutron converting into a proton, we now have a new element we're working with. For example, let's consider iodine. In an isotope of iodine known as iodide-131, beta decay can happen. Because the neutron becomes a proton, the atomic number of the atom will change, but the mass will remain the same because protons and neutrons are both found within the nucleus. Positron emission, or beta plus decay, happens when a proton wants to become a neutron. This happens because a proton emits a positron, which is equivalent to an electron that has a positive charge. Once emitted, the proton is a neutron with a neutral charge. For example, let's consider beryllium. In an isotope of beryllium known as beryllium-7, positron emission can happen. The proton becomes a neutron, making the atomic number of the atom change, but the mass remain the same, just like in beta decay. Before we look at our last type of decay, let's talk about something called the atomic emission spectra. In an atom, electrons arrange themselves to minimize the atom's energy. The lowest energy state of an atom is known as the ground state. When atoms receive energy, electrons absorb it and shift to higher energy levels. This extra energy in the atom shifts it into an excited state. An atom in an excited state has a higher potential energy than in the ground state, making it unstable. Upon returning to the ground state, the atom emits the previously absorbed energy as electromagnetic radiation. This means we can see different colors of light on the visible light spectrum or have higher waves of energy being released like gamma rays. Gamma decay happens alongside other types of decay. There is no change in mass or atomic number, but rather a gamma wave is emitted, releasing a high amount of energy. We'll also see slightly different notation in the equation when gamma decay is taking place. A star will be placed next to the original atom to indicate it's in an excited state. At the end, our emitted gamma wave will be written with a zero zero and a gamma symbol. The zero zero is necessary because the wave is not matter, it is just light or a photon. For example, let's consider the original equation we used for alpha decay. If the uranium is in an excited state, it has the potential to emit a gamma wave, thus going through gamma decay. Atoms that emit this type of energy are still going through the other type of decay as normal. To indicate its gamma decay, the initial atom is starred and the ending result shows a gamma symbol.